if you consider a cell as a factory, then lysosome inside the cell is nothing but a shredding machine or recycling center. So in a shredding machine, you can put all the things that you don't want and shred it and recycle it. So the lysosome is very similar. It has battery of enzymes, especially the hydrolases, which can break down variety of product and basically recycle them. But apart from this recycling and clearance function, lysosome is also very important for metabolic sensing, nutrient sensing, and sometimes it is important for transcriptional regulation and it mediates plasma membrane repair as well. After a decade of research, it has been now clear that lysosome is involved in many different cellular processes ranging from metabolic sensing, apoptosis, cytotoxic killing, cholesterol transport, detoxification, and many others. So lysosome emerged out to be a super important organelle inside the cell. So in this whole video, we'll be talking about how a lysosome is important, its internal composition, and its cellular functions. So lysosome has acid hydrolases. It has more, more, more than 60 different types of hydrolases. And these acid hydrolases are mainly protease, DNAs, RNAs, which does tons of function. Apart from the internal composition, the membrane of the lysosome is decorated with several ion transporters, which continuously pumps in and out several ions and other nutrients. And it has an important meaning to it. In a second, we will know that. So, first of all, the damaged proteins and the inefficient enzymes all are degraded in the lysosome by the action of lysosomal hydrolases. And also the damaged RNA or DNA can be degraded in the lysosome by lysosomal DNAs or RNAs. Lysosome can first kill, I mean, fuse with a uh, endocytotic vesicle or phagosome which contains uh, external pathogen let's say a bacteria or virus and form a endolysosome to degrade that or maybe sometime it can uh, fuse with autophagic vesicle and it might break down or recycle one entire organelle like mitochondria in this example so lysosome is generally spherical in size and nature but when it fuses with endosome, it forms a secondary kind of lysosome known as endolysosome. And it secretes all of its hydrolase, uh, DNAs, RNAs, enzyme to uh, recycle this senile organelle, let's say. Now, the fun part is the lysosome has an extremely acidic environment. And it turns out all the hydrolases, DNAs, RNAs, etc., work at a pH of 4.6 but how this acidic pH is maintained so on the lyso on the lysosome you have several transporters and ion channels that I have mentioned and among them most important is the proton pump so which is a V type ATPase which pumps in hydrogen ion inside and as a result the pH of the lysosome is strictly maintained to 4.6 to 5 range. Apart from these uh, V-type ATPases, there are calcium transporters. Now, calcium level change or local cytosolic calcium level change or spike in calcium level could be very important for lysosome trafficking and localizing the lysosome into the specific cellular location. Apart from that, there are several uh, other transporters which allow the degraded amino acid sugar and lipid to be released in the cytosol such that it could be utilized after recycling in the lysosome right now lysosome can also work as a nutrient sensor because the components of mTOR C pathway is actually uh, associated with ribosome it turns out mTOR pathway can actually sense the nutrient availability or uh, growth signal in the environment. Let's say there are a lot of growth signals in the environment and now it is the situation is like feasible for cell to grow and divide. So that message would be conveyed inside the cell by these mTOR pathway and that is how lysosome work like a nutrient sensor, right? 
and whenever there is ample amount of growth signals or mitogenic signal via mTOR pathway it would signal to create more protein and thereby help the cell to grow in size and in terms of functionality as well now let's just take a look where the lysosomal enzymes are manufactured it turns out lysosomal enzymes are manufactured in the er on the ribosomes attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum definitely every protein is synthesized there after its production it is delivered to the golgi apparatus and in the golgi apparatus there are sorting happening so golgi apparatus is the warehouse of the cell so it would sort several proteins and sort specifically the lysosomal protein for delivery it to the lysosome and not any other organelle but lysosome has a safeguard mechanism let's say one of the acid hydrolases are mistakenly delivered to mitochondria but really it doesn't matter for the cell or doesn't matter for the mitochondria because that acid hydrolase would be kind of inactivated because it need a ph of that and let's say during delivery there is a problem with the delivery machinery and the enzyme leaks out in the cytoplasm still the enzyme will be inactive because the ph of the cytoplasm is kind of neutral like 7 but these enzymes work optimally at 4.6 to 5 range so this is a safeguard mechanism that the cell has we would talk about how the transport of lysosomal hydrolases take place in a lot more details in this video so let's say from the vesicles uh, from the ER is fusing into the cis Golgi where the sorting would happen. Now, in cis Golgi, several mannose residues are sequentially trimmed by uh, Golgi mannosidase 1, and then it, the, the vesicles or the proteins associated with that is also moving towards the uh, Golgi apparatus. In medial Golgi apparatus, mannose residues are even trimmed. And new N acetylglucosamine residues are sequentially added. Now remember, this particular modification that is happening on the tag is important because this tag is the one which would be important for delivery of the acid hydrolase to the lysosome. Now, after several rounds of modification, the N acetylglucosamine transferase add N acetylglucosamine and then deliver it into the trans Golgi. In the trans Golgi, a few galactose and n acetyl muramic acid residues are sequentially added. And the main thing is there is a phosphotransferase enzyme which transfers a phosphate residue onto the mannose. So it is a mannose 6 phosphate tag, which is a lysosome specific delivery tag. Now, this delivery tag is so important because Phosphorylated mannose 6 residue can bind to mannose 6 phosphate uh, receptor on the trans Golgi. Now, these mannose 6 phosphate receptor allow it to be uh, packaged in form of specific vesicles, and that vesicle goes and bind to, the, I mean, fuse to the lysosome. Now, inside the lysosome, there is acidic environment, right? Because the protons are pumped inside the lysosome. And the pH is 4.6 to 5. In that situation, the interaction between the mannose phosphate receptor and the mannose phosphate tag is kind of destabilized. So the enzyme, which is the hydrolase, is kind of detached and skipped inside the lysosome, and the receptor is recycled back and could be used for second round of transportation. Now, this mechanism of tagging is so important because many of the cases it has been seen uh, there are defects in the phosphotransferase enzyme which give this uh, mannose 6 phosphate tag and in that situation several products has been accumulating in the Golgi, uh, uh, Golgi and creating storage lysosomal storage disorders that is why lysosomal protein trafficking is very important and normal lysosomal physiology is important for clearance of the cellular uh, uh, junk or cellular waste inside the cell so that concludes my video on this topic i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you